Welcome to Tech Brothers with Amir. In this video, we are going to learn how to create virtual machine in Azure. So first of all, before we create the virtual machine, we need to create a virtual network. So what exactly is the virtual network in Azure? So let's take a look. Azure virtual network is a fundamental building block for your private network in Azure. VNet enables many types of Azure resources, such as Azure virtual machines, to securely communicate with each other the internet and on-premises networks. So, VNet is similar to traditional network that you would operate in your own data center, but brings you additional benefits of Azure's infrastructure such as scale, availability, and isolation. So that's what we are going to do. First of all, we are going to create a, a VNet, and then we are going to create a, a VM that will be using that VNet, VNet. So how you create a VNet? Uh, first of all, you're going to say virtual and uh, once you say virtual, it show you virtual networks here. So we are going to create a virtual network. Let's click on create and uh, select your subscription and then you're going to select the resource group. And then you will be providing uh, the name of virtual network. So tech versus IT dash VNet. So that's the name I'm going to use. In region is to US is fine. And the uh, next uh, you have IP addresses. So that's the range it is using so i'm fine with that now what we are going to do we are going to if you would like to add ipv6 address space you can add that by default it's going to create one or default subnet we am fine with that and if we would like to create more subnets i can click right here and add i'm going to create those subnets later we will create one subnet for our vms and that's what we will do right after that so you can go to security and the bastion host disable uh, these are all the things I'm going to leave that as uh, just disable. So if you want to have a tags and all that, and finally you are going to create. A, so I'm going to go and preview it, and uh, we are going to create a virtual network. Now, once our virtual network will be ready, we are going to create a VM. There are different types of VMs available. So there are actually tons of them, and uh, I'm interested to create a Windows uh, uh, VM. We will be using the operating system 2016 data center. So let's uh, go right there. It's uh, ready. So our VNet is ready. So attack versus VNet is all set. I'm going to go ahead and clear, create on subnets and uh, create one subnet uh, that we will use for uh, our v, uh, VM Tech Brothers and the subnet VM that's the name I have given so we are going to create more uh, subnets in our next demo so I'm given a name so I can remember what exactly this uh, subnet is for so hit OK so you leave this as it is it is, uh, it is going to be created automatically so you don't have to worry about anything like that okay our subnet is ready next part is uh, we are going to create a virtual network Sorry, next part is uh, we are going to create a virtual machine. So you will type a virtual and you are going to get virtual machine right there. Now you hit uh, create and uh, add a new virtual machine. This has tons of uh, virtual machines available. You select your subscription, then you are going to select your uh, resource group. Uh, here is a instance name or machine name that we are going to provide. Uh, so I'm going to call it uh, Tech Brothers and uh, VM. That's what I'm going to say. You can call it a Win VM as well. So it tells you like it's a Windows machine. If you later decided to create some uh, Ubuntu or something, you can have some naming convention. East US is just fine. I'm not going to be worried about these ones. And here is a list of that. There are tons of them. You can always see all images. And uh, here you can uh, further search for them. So if you would type just 2016, it's going to show you a lot of them so you can use them this uh, depend upon your uh, requirement uh, i'm going to close that one and come back to the so i'm going to be fine with windows server 2016 data center now next uh, you are going to go and uh, you have other uh, features available in my case i'm going to go uh, see all sizes here and i'm fine with the one vcpu 3.5 uh, gib ram and the uh, disk you know and that's all I would like to have so the total cost is gonna be $91 for me per month if you will go with the more vCPUs and more RAM you're gonna have to pay more so it depends on the size and the resources you're gonna use and there are other ones so we are fine with that one select and next part is 
disk so you can uh, add new disks here if you would like or uh, uh, you know you can attach the existing one so i'm not worried about that i'm just going to use as it is whatever i have this is just for demo purpose but uh, do your more research uh, if you are interested to decorate with the uh, large size of uh, disk sizes and all that so you can uh, you know uh, change it and add them then you're going to go to network and here is my tech versus vnet available that's fine that's all I want to use here in the subnet so remember that we have created a tech res v subnet to VM so we are going to use that one and here you have a public IP so I can create the public IP because I'm going to connect to this VM by RDP so that's fine I can uh, if I don't have to connect to from the public uh, uh, let's say I don't want to remote to this one and uh, there is another machine I have created uh, on the same VNet uh, that uh, I can connect to so I can uh, use that one but here I need to connect to this uh, uh, um, uh, VM by remote desktop so I'm going to use uh, the uh, public IP here so leave everything as it is rest of that okay if we have to play with that we can play allow selected ports uh, 3389 uh, that's uh, allowed we want to use that because we want to use the remote desktop okay next if you have to use ssh and all that you can also select that now we are all set here in the management uh, you have a lot more features here and depending on your requirements uh, you can go through them and uh, then uh, you can enable them uh, such as auto shutdown uh, backup uh, you know guest os uh, updates and all that so you can go through them read through that and then enable whatever you need to enable in the advanced uh, tabs uh, you have also uh, you know different features that you want to use it you know but in my case i'm not really interested in all that information so i'm going to go ahead and create a new vm so okay validation failed uh, one field is missing go to basics here and uh, what is missing so our username we have to provide the username that we would like to use to log into this machine so hs that is just fine okay so we are all good here now we should be creating our vm and then uh, finally we will connect uh, by using the remote you have a set rdp ports open to the internet this is only recommended for testing if you want to change this testing go back to basic i'm fine for now because i would like to connect to this uh, vm and then uh, we can change if we need to it's uh, creating our vm right now so you can see deployment in process it's uh, creating a network public uh, address and then it is creating a network security group for this vm so uh, that's uh, called tegras vm vm nsc so uh, then it's creating a network interfaces for this vm so it's uh, creating one by one all those uh, different uh, parts of it that is are important for this uh, vm Finally, our uh, VM is ready and we can go to resource. Uh, once you go to resource, uh, you can connect uh, by clicking here. You can restart, you can stop, then you can capture. You have delete, refresh, and um, open in mobile and all different uh, uh, options right here. Okay. Now, what's uh, other uh, properties it has? Uh, the properties are here. You can see uh, your network address. Uh, that's your public address. Uh, your private address uh, can be seen here. Uh, that's uh, your uh, vnet you are using is uh, showing you that uh, dns name you can go ahead and configure and all those kind of things uh, and uh, you have disk size and everything now in the monitoring uh, you can see uh, different uh, things such as cpu network disk uh, uh, disk operations uh, and available memory and if you go to the capabilities uh, you are going to see all those features that you can enable or configure here i have not configured these ones uh, so you can see right there some of them are not configured okay so recommendations okay if there is any recommendations are there uh, they will uh, tell you right here if uh, you are interested to learn uh, uh, more about these vms uh, you can watch these videos or watch my videos i'm just kidding but you can uh, always watch these videos and uh, find out like how to troubleshoot common v vm uh, issues you know and there are tons of other videos available so you can do that now we are all good here we are going to go and connect to our vm by rdp and uh, that's the public ip it is using that's the port it is using i'm going to download rdp file and once it's downloaded i'm going to double click right here and then open it it has opened this uh, remote desktop connection 
hit uh, connect and then uh, once I hit connect uh, it's uh, showing me hey you have to provide the username I'm gonna go ahead and provide the username and then I'm gonna provide the password okay it's uh, giving me another warning for certificate and I said yes and now it's uh, connecting and finally it is a uh, connected so you can see right there okay so that's the uh, IP public IP for this uh, VM and uh, our VM is a uh, starting first time actually it is uh, has been started but we are connecting to our VM first time by using the remote desktop so you can see right there looking good from here you can do many things uh, such as uh, if I would like to connect to the uh, my Azure SQL database or uh, my manage instance and all those kind of things uh, I can do from here especially in case of manage instance it's very important uh, to have a VM on the same network uh, on the same VNet uh, so you can connect to the managed SQL instance but uh, for now we are all good here so uh, you guys can uh, go to the Internet Explorer if you want to download something you can always uh, go to google.com or Microsoft or whatever and then uh, uh, you can uh, download from there so let's say if I would like to um, I wanna if I wanna go have the same policies whatever so I can always go back here you know do google.com it's gonna open uh, all those uh, right here and uh, finally it will open uh, Google and uh, you can uh, work on this one so you can disable these messages here you go go, and go to the if you, you don't want to see all that here you can go to the I believe failover cluster manager right there I believe that yeah that's what it is go to the local server I believe here and then uh, check for uh, Windows uh, enhanced security I, I think that's what it is yeah and you can do off so if you are not interested you can just do off and that should do it and now if you close it uh, it's gonna be all good so you can download your uh, SSMS uh, or anything and uh, then uh, once it's downloaded uh, you can connect to your uh, uh, your uh, SQL database or manage instance and all that you know it's gonna work just fine for you okay so thank you very much for watching and uh, this uh, in this video we learn uh, how you can create uh, your uh, Azure VNet uh, and uh, how you can create uh, the VM on Azure and then connect uh, remotely to that uh, VM. In next video, we are going to learn more about uh, uh, maybe use a, uh, Azure database or manage instance from these VMs. Uh, thank you very much for watching. Please uh, leave your comments and subscribe my channel. And I will see you guys in the next video.